All right, I have now third attempt to do this, to try to record this video. The first time I recorded it, I didn't even get a chance to record it because I messed up and had Discord as my front line there. Second time I recorded it, I was starting it up, and then my mother called me after hearing the police sirens go off. And was wondering if I was okay, which was fine. And now this is my third attempt to record this, so I'm going to try to probably speed this recording up a little bit. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, ProShock and the Nice Ted Jog here with a new draft analysis here for you guys. We're here for the LCD, the Lysander Cafe Draft. We are here, and this league is a anything ability league, and which means we can run any ability on our Pokemon every single week. There are a few complex band abilities, and there are some complex status with them. Hardcore bands are Arena Trap slash Shadow Tag and then Neutralizing Gas. Obviously, the trapping moves just to get rid of the trapping abilities just to get rid of them because it's not as fun. It's not going to, and everyone could just run it. And the reason why to get Neutralizing Gas is banned, well, then there defeats the purpose of an anything goes in with having, you know, this and that. So, but there are certain abilities that are not allowed to be used. So, for example, Libero, Protein, Contrary, Gorilla Tactics. Some of the more broken abilities, I believe Speed Boost and Intrepid Store, they were allowed that you can be on every single Pokemon. But those certain abilities, like I said, Gorilla Tech and Contrary, they cannot be used except on the Pokemon that learned them. So, for example, with Galadar, Manitan is the only Pokemon allowed to use, is the only Pokemon allowed to use Gorilla Tactics. No other Pokemon can use Gorilla Tactics, otherwise they'd just be broken. So those were there. They could still run other abilities, but those abilities are the only abilities limited to that Pokemon. And then Mega Mega Pokemon can actually have their pre-Mega Evolutions have a different ability. So, for example, if like you have Mega Gyarados, regular Gyarados can have Drizzle. And then Mega Gyarados, once it Mega Evolves, goes back to having Mold Breaker, but now has rain-boosted water attacks in the rain. So that's really, really cool right there. And you kind of see with one of my picks, I kind of have an lot of idea about that myself. But, regardless, the mega when it comes to Mega Pokemon and their pre-Mega Evolved forms, like say, for example, Mega Sharpedo. Like, regular Sharpedo is not allowed to have speed boost, even though it regularly you can run it. When it comes to Mega Pokemon, the Mega Pokemon cannot have the ability of the first Pokemon. So basically, Mega Swampert, when it's like pre Mega and it's like Torrent, and then if Mega Evolves and a Swift Swim, it will always have Swift Swim. However, if you draft normal, if you draft Swampert, Mega Swampert in normal Swampert can have Drizzle, and then once you hit the Mega Evolve button, then you can have Swift Swim, Mega Swampert, and then boom, on that turn, you instantly outspeed everything on your team. So it's a really cool format. It's a lot different, it's more unique. I'm probably going to lose every single game this season, but I'm looking to have some fun. My team is basically a team that I have a lot of mods that I have barely ever used and mods I have never really drafted. So, <coughs> oh, excuse me. Whew. So I'm super excited for this team. Super excited to have some fun with everyone. A lot of new people here. I have at least one coach that I'm used to, and that's Steering, but eh, Steering, he just jumps in the middle. But um, regardless, I'm super excited for this league, and let's get into it. So it was 12 coaches in our division. There were three divisions. We got the highest skill division all because of our background history and for the fact that Steering does know me and knows for the fact that I'm a very ex very talented player and definitely thinks I deserve to be in the top division. So I thank you, Steering, for that. I got pick one out of 12 coaches, and I couldn't pass it up. This was a no-brainer pick. By the way, in this league, Slacking and Regigigas were 100% banned. And I 100% understand why, because even without huge power and pure power, which also were abilities that I, you cannot run in all your Pokemon except for things that learn it, um, they are just broken Pokemon without them. They are very much broken, because all you can run is Scrappy and you be fine. Like, legit? Dude, they could run Scrappy every single week, and they would be fine. They are just annoying, but I went with Dragon Bolt. Dragon Bolt's a Pokemon I don't ever use. I've only used Dragon Bolt in one league, and then I took over a team in a monotype league that had, excuse me, that had Dragon Bolt on it. 
And then I basically haven't used Dragon Bolt since. There are a couple of times I think I've gotten Dragon Bolt, like Dragon Dragon Bolt on my one VGC team I used. Did not use that thing really at all, and it just ended up being a good Pokemon for me in VGC. Um, then I used it in a league recently. Well, not recently, but it was actually one of Steering's leagues. And the league just kept stacking. I wasn't having fun, and then just so much of just mentally being burnt out and trying to prep for teams and stuff like that got to the best of me, and I just dropped out of the league. And that's where I had Dragon Ball, and again, wasn't using Dragon Ball. So this is my one chance to really use Dragon Ball and see if I can use it. Dragon Ball can run a lot of variant abilities. There's obviously things like Magic Gar. There's things like uh, Sheer Force. Hey, even probably Grimune, which Spectre's ability can even be a really cool thing they do. Or something like Beast Boost, which can also be really cool because I can custom tailor to my ability, custom ta- tailor to my stats, which is really, really cool. Just overall, there's a lot of different, I think there's a lot of cool different ways that Dragon Bolt can be run. And I'm super excited to try Dragon Bolt. I'm really happy to have it. I think it's a very good Pokemon and I'm super excited for it. Now going to my wheel pick, I had, I think there was one Pokemon I might have somewhat got sniped on, but not 100% on. And it was actually going to be the round I may have picked it if I didn't want to go the one. I did get slightly sniped on Heatran. I actually was really willing to try Heatran because of the fact that with any ability, Levitate, Water Absorb, like, there were a lot of options for Heatran that I could have not ran with. But it's all right. It's fine. But, um, and then it was Corviknight. Corviknight, I could have, I'm not going to lie to you guys, I might have just ran one ability on that thing and would have ran Weakness Policy, something like that, every single week. Because I would just want to run Filter, which would have been just dummy broken for that Pokemon like that. That's super really good defenses. But I ultimately went with a different skill type, as you'll see. But this boy, this has been a Pokemon I want to believe is so good. But the one problem is he is crippled by his moveset. And because of him being crippled by his moveset, he's not that good of a Pokemon. And that just hurts because I love his design. And I just love, though, he's just so fun and full of personality. But it's my boy, Reggie Lucky, Bounce Man. It's a Mega Man reference if you get that one. But I love Reggie Lucky. I, he's, he's just so cool. I think competitively, Reggie Drago is 10 times better than he is. But from a design aspect and just from overall preference, I love Reggie Lucky so much. He's such a good boy. But overall, Reggie Lucky is a Pokemon that I'm so excited for this league. As you can see, I do have an ability preference, and I'm not going to lie, if my opponents are somehow watching this, don't be surprised if this is the only ability I run on this thing. Because the reason why with Refrigerate, it gives, which also was a reason I had this little Aurorus right here. What you guys don't know about Refrigerate, if you've never really seen it, which is very rare, because it's only run on one mod, I'm pretty sure. This Pokemon's normal type moves become Ice type, and then give basically a stab power boost to those moves so basically it gets an extra stab power it's not gonna be stab but it just gets an extra base like an ex, ex like expert power expert belt or life orb boost at attack and refrigerate on this pokemon is so good you want to know why it's so good you get explosion if you need to body slam extreme speed facade even rapid spin can be really good support options with it as well Let's see, we also got Giga Impact, Hyper Beam if we want to go that route, and even Thrash and stuff like that. Like, it makes this Pokemon now slightly better and stops Volt Absorb Pokemon from doing worse. So now this thing, it can beat Thunderous, even though it kind of technically can already do that with Ancient Power, but it's more better. This thing can now take on Zara Auras. This thing can now take on Lightning Rod Pokemon, like... And the big thing is, all those big, sca- big scary, dra- dark brown types, boom. Reggie Lecky checks them. Grass types, Reggie Lecky checks them. Well, the ones that are more physically defensive weak. But you know what I mean. I could run Choice Band to Reggie Lecky and be happy. I could run Specs and be happy. And now this Pokemon is so good. I am really excited for Reggie Lecky. I wouldn't be surprised if I bring this thing every single week just because of the fact that, that with having now... That kind of ability with it is so good. I'm really excited for it. With my third pick, like I said, I was kind of looking at Heatran. Wasn't 100% set on it. The same thing, but this was one of the three steel types I wanted the most, I think. And I'm so happy I got this. And this has been a Pokemon 
I have been wanting to use for so freaking long. It's the boy, the homie, Code Red, the Scissor. I am so excited for Scissor. I have been wanting to use this Pokemon for so long. I have used Mega Scissor several times with full leagues, and it's been all right. It's not been the greatest, but it's been fun. But I've never gotten a chance to use regular scissor. And every time I see people use regular scissor, I look at that Pokemon like, oh my god, that Pokemon is so much fun. I gotta try this Pokemon. And I'm so happy I finally got it. There's a couple of reasons why this is a really good Pokemon. For one, it can run Primordial Sea, which basically means Rain type basically getting that no fire type moves can ever be hit on me. There is a little bit of a downside though, is that Hurricane can hit me like a mother trucker. Mother trucker if I'm not careful. There's obviously the big one being Flash Fire, which means I literally will not have a weakness on my team. I can literally only be neutrally hit. And neutral hits sometimes aren't even that strong on Scizor because he can be built that defensive, which is so crazy to me and so wild. And just the, the options of Scizor are really good. I can go back and run normal abilities, something like Technician. I can run something like maybe Defiant. I could run something more like, you know, um, Intrepid Sword if I really wanted to, if I run a Choice Band set and stuff like that. I just am so excited for Scizor. It's going to be such an amazing Pokemon. And the fact that Scizor is also a really good offensive breaker. It's also a really good defensive pivoting to piece two, which is really nice. Just overall, I'm so happy. And think about this. I could even run Sheer for Scizor if I really wanted to. Now you can say, wow, that's kind of stupid, but Scizor's, um, it's got some options to do so. It does have things like, say, you know, Iron Head. It does have things like, you know, Psycho Cut, which I don't know if that is boosted. There's things like Super Power that get boosted like that. Obviously, other things like that. Um, potentially Fury Cutter and stuff like that. And this is another one of those Pokemon I can maybe run a Refrigerated Whip if I really wanted to, depending on the matchup. And just overall, I love Scizor. I'm so excited to try this Pokemon. I'm so happy to finally try it. I still want to try it in a normal league, but for regular leagues, for this league, I'm super excited. Going to my next wheel, and by the way, so far, so far, Dragonfall, barely ever used. Regilicky, never used. This, uh, Scizor, never, never really used. Next is a Pokemon that I have used its Mega Form a few times. And it's recently being used in a BDSP Wi-Fi draft where it's in top five for kill leaders after just a few weeks. And that is regular Gyarados. Now, there's a couple of reasons why I went with regular Gyarados. There's a lot of cool uniqueness to it. I was actually debating on having this paired with Gastrodon as my dark, as my ground type. Because Gastrodon's only weakness then would be grass. I could run Sap Sipping. And then there's no weakness to grass. And then Gastrodon just walls everything. But then there became an issue with having that, and that's freeze dry. I really didn't want to deal with a lot of weaknesses, especially if I was going to eventually pick up a grass type and stuff like that, and I'm ground type. I didn't want a ton of ice weaknesses on my team, including freeze dry. So I unfortunately decided not to go that route, even though I think those two would have been perfectly paired well in other. There's things like Volt Absorb. There's things like Lightning Rod, which Gyarados don't sleep on special Gyarados. I've seen some mad people with some big cojones run that, and it's actually worked pretty well for them. But um, the thing with Gyarados is that there's a lot of cool things, like there's Drizzle with Gyarados, so you can get boosted up attacks. There's obviously Primordial Sea, and it can take advantage of its own Hurricane and water-based attacks. And just it's just so much that I can do with Gyarados. There's even Intrepid Sword Gyarados that can be really cool in case you don't run Moxie. Like, there's just a lot of uniqueness to Gyarados, I feel like. Plus, Gyarados overall is just an amazing Pokemon. And I just think it's going to be so exciting to use it, and i um, really excited to try Gyarados that's not BDSP. So my first real go at it without BDSP in a National Dex format, so I'm Hoping to do well with this Pokemon. Hopefully Gyarados does not lead to disappoint me. And I'm not going to make any transactions for this season until I find something maybe that's not as good. And then I back out of it. But we'll see how it leads. And to pair with uh, Gyarados, I picked up Count Kelder, which I think was a bit of a left left um, left um field kind of pick. Like I think this was definitely a pick that made probably not a ton of sense to grab. 
But it makes kind of sense when you look at the context of what I want. This is a Pokemon that I think can run really well with something like, say, Dauntless Shield and get a plus one defense boost. This is also a Pokemon that if you give a choice span to with Intrepid Sword, that just screams, let me nuke something hard. This is a Pokemon that can run something like a max HP, max Bedef Assault Vest set, and then run Trippet Sword, have a plus one guaranteed boosted off hit, and then start smacking things with it. But one of the main things I wanted to try with Conkelder that I think makes so much sense that it, it literally has to be brought. And that's Tough Claws. Now... Why is Tough Claws something you would get? So, if anyone's never seen Tough Claws before, um, Tough Claws is an ability where if I make contact with, for example, well, with Barnacles, with Barnacles, or Barbarical would be his hands and claws, but with any form of hand or physical contact from, let's say, a hand to a shoulder, that power is basically the power of a choice of a life orb and or choice banded boosted hit and that's if it's contact boosted and you give that to a boy like on Kelder whose base attack is 140 this thing at level 100 will have roughly nearly 400 to 500 in attack just from hitting you once this Pokemon is destructive as all heck. And I'm so excited for my boy Conky Kong. Now, I will say I picked up Conkelder, I think, twice in a draft league when I took over a team and I picked it up. And both times I picked it up, it has served me incredibly well. In one season, I think it was one of my very first, my very, like one of my two first Wi Fi leagues I officially started doing. Conkelder was, I think, either my kill leader or second in my kill leader. On my team when I picked it up. That's how good Conkelder is. Conkelder is a monster Pokemon. And I am super excited to see how Conkelder does for us this season. And just what else he can do for us as well. And plus they're scrappy. Which is really really good. So I'm super excited for Conkelder. Going to my next wheelhouse picks here. Wait. Yeah. My next wheelhouse picks. Uh, first one, I think this could definitely be a bit of a weird one because one of its abilities would probably be on there for sure. But this is also a bit of an out there one, I think, and because there's a lot of uniqueness to it. I think there's some aspects of something like Magic Guard Life Orb. There's something like running the normal Regenerator. There's definitely something like potentially maybe something like maybe not. Well, I guess Natural Cure doesn't really make much sense. Maybe something like Chili Nay. Maybe something like Dauntless Shield. You know, there's I think there's a few cool ways to run Sloking with any ability. And overall, Sloking is just a good Pokemon. I remember the first time I ever drafted this Pokemon, there were several times I was hesitant about dropping this Pokemon because I felt like it was not doing well. And then when it came to the last few seasons and playoffs, Galarian Sloking you guys remembered if you watched on the channel came in took names and won us a APA championship which oh I was so happy and I was so impressed by this thing it was so amazing and now I'm just so excited to have this thing again and there's a Pokemon I've only used once there have been a lot of times I can probably use it but I usually get a psychic type or a poison type and I usually want something that was a little more different for it but I'm super excited <gasps> Excuse me. I'm super excited for, for Glow King. I'm really happy to try it again. Excuse me. And I pair that off with Mega Hound Dude. Now I have roughly three mods that are guaranteed with elite speed, which I think is really cool. Probably didn't space them out the best of the way they probably could have been, but we'll work with what we have. And plus, we also have some other cool speed tiers on this team. But. I went with Houndoom. Houndoom is a Pokemon I love near and dear in my soul. It is an amazing mon, and I love it so dearly. But there is something about Houndoom that sometimes is a little bit of a hit or miss Pokemon. When it comes to Mega Houndoom, it has an ability that does not do it justice, and doesn't really even work unless you do Sun Teams. 
And I think that's just a bit of a bad thing for a Pokemon that can only be drafted with, with having Sun. Now, this is a Pokemon, bear in mind you, that necessarily, in my opinion, doesn't need Sun to be good. But in most times out of not, it has to it's usually drafted when there is Sun. But for me, I can have Sun just on it by itself. Which is pretty dang funny. And um um I'm really happy for this Pokemon. I'm super ecstatic for it. I have not used this Pokemon since I think Gen 7. I really think since Gen 7 I haven't used this Pokemon. And that is to me so crazy that I haven't been able to use that since Gen 7. It's really kind of unique and different for that reason, but I am so down and excited for this. Obviously, there's probably one ability you're going to see me run regardless, and that's definitely going to be Drought into Solar Power. Now, obviously, by doing that, it makes no sense, and it's not going to really help my case, and it's not really going to do me much. But regardless, I'm super excited for Houndoom. Cerberus is here, and I get to use that shiny blue dog of destruction. Oh, look at him. He is just so sick. And plus, giving a really strong special breaker. But you can see my team has a lot of more towards physical offense than special, but now we're building up the special with the last two picks. So going to my last wheel pick, um, well, technically it could have been second to last, but you can only draft a 10 to 11 Pokemon. And I only went with 10 because I kind of valued a little bit more of what I had already going for me. And I actually was saving a lot of points for a while. And this became a one I easily used up almost all my points for. But I went with the Bulls. The first Bull being El Toro. Tapu Bulu. Now, I felt like this was a very interesting pick. And I think a lot of people probably have thought it was probably kind of dumb or weird for me to grab this. And I think it's all fair to say that Tapu Bulu, when it comes to Grassy Surge, Rillaboom is best. There is no doubt about it. I 100% agree with all of you. Bulu is the worst of running Grassy Surge. Unless it got Grassy Glide, then it would be probably, it would just be about a tie then. But any league where Bulu can run any ability that is legal. Also, by the way, no teams are allowed Wonder Guard as well. Wonder Guard is a hundred percent ban. Well, I think some people don't ban it anymore. It's almost like it's going to be a hundred percent ban. But regardless, um, Bulu I feel like is super underrated. I think it's gonna be really unique to see how we can make it work. In this type of format, I can definitely see something like Dauntless Shield, Intrepid Sword, Beast Boost. You know, just a lot of different variables to it. You know, like a cool kind of thing. Like maybe something like Defiant, something like that. Maybe something like Flash Fire, stuff like that. Maybe try to be creative with it. Like be different with it. So... I'm excited to try Bulu. I needed a grass type. I also needed a fairy type. It's not going to really be the best fairy type to have on the team, but I needed something, and I felt like this was just a cool, unique, different typing and different form. So why not give it a shot and just have some fun with it? So hopefully I get to have some fun using Bulu this season. And the second bull we grabbed was Bull E. If you get the Timmy Turner reference right there from the episode, then you're a real legend. If you don't know, look up the Timmy Turner episodes. I shouldn't even say Timmy Turner, but you'll know what I mean. But I went with Tauros. I mean, it's not necessarily the worst I could have did. I mean, I think there's a few abilities that Tauros can definitely take advantage of. Like, I think there's something things like Scrappy, Defiant, Guts. You know, like, there's, there's some options for Tauros, I feel like. Plus, I needed really something to switch in Ghost-type hits. Like, I had nothing that really dealt with Ghost-types besides Cerberus, and... We all know how frail Cerberus is. Well, he's got decent obsession defense and stuff. Regardless, he's not that bulky, and I don't have anything else that really wants to take ghost type hits on my team. So I need a ghost switch in of some sort. And this is where I felt like Tauros was really, really good. I think Tauros is very unique, very different. I've only used Tauros twice in league format. One in Wi-Fi and one on Showdown, and it's been all right for me. It's been decent. It's not been worse or anything like that. It's definitely been reliable enough. 
Um, I'm super excited for Tauros. I am willing to give a shot. Also, uh, Tapu Bulu has been a Pokemon I never really, I've never ever drafted, so I'm super excited for that as well. But overall, very excited for the team and uh, kind of hoping to see what the uh, what the Monteen had for us. And then with my final pick, I needed a ground type. I had no ground type at all. So I settled with Fair Trap, the Galar Stungfist. Now, you can argue and say, why grab another Steel type? Why grab a ground, ground type that's relatively not that bulky? Well, that's where Dauntless Shield comes into play for that. And plus, this is necessarily speaking not a terrible Mon. It's definitely not the best. But if you really think about it, this Pokemon has a terrible ability. It has ability that is only based on terrain and terrain only. So that's what really sucks. But the cool thing about Galar Stumpfisk is now it can run abilities to help it. So things like something like Filter, Levitate, Flash Fire, Dauntless Shield, like I said before. Like there is some uniqueness and something different about their abilities that can definitely make them more viable, more different, stuff like that. So I'm super looking forward to using uh, Galar Stunfisk. I believe I was going to try using it in one league where it was very low tier, but I ended up dropping out of that league. So it didn't really do much for me. But overall, I'm super excited. This also gives me my one and only Stealth Rocker I have on my team. So there was that. But I mostly just drafted it for a ground typing just because I really, really needed it. Plus, it's a ground type that is neutral to something that goes like with ice moves, so it's less more defensively hit to hit. So, super excited! I think overall the team's not like 100%. The team is not great. The team is 100% not going to be amazing or perfect, no matter what I try to do. But I think overall the team is incredible, and I do think that the team is going to be an amazing squad this season. I think the main goal for the season is to win at least one game and to overall just have fun with the season, not stress about it, and try to be creative, and also just try to build with these new mods that I have never really used at all before. So I'm super excited for the season. I hope you guys are as well. But with that being said, I'm in Shocker and I see Hedgehog. I will see you guys next time, and I can't wait to see you guys for week one. Till next time, guys. Peace.